Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice system of equations. We have x minus y equals y minus z equals 7 and we're going to evaluate x squared plus z squared minus 2y squared based on the givens. So one of the things that I want you to notice about this problem is that we were, are given two equations but we have three variables. So we don't have enough equations. So what do we do? We're going to find a numerical value for the second expression, which is x squared plus z squared minus 2y squared. So I'll be presenting at least three methods, and let's see how that goes. All right, I want to start with the second method, because that's my favorite. Now, for my second method, I'm going to do the following. I'll start with x squared plus z squared minus 2y squared and then split the negative 2y squared. Looking at the expression, we are given x minus y and y minus z. Those are differences. And then this kind of reminds me somewhat difference of squares, which contains differences, right? So I'm going to write it as x squared minus y squared plus z squared minus y squared. I just split up the negative 2 into negative 1 plus negative 1. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and negate the second expression or part of the expression. And the reason behind that is I don't want to have z squared minus y squared, but I want to have y squared minus z squared for this reason. Make sense? Cool. Now let's go ahead and work this out. We can factor x squared minus y squared, because that's the difference of two squares, as x plus y x minus y and the second expression as y plus z times y minus z. So this is the expression that we're trying to evaluate, right? But we do know something. For example, x minus y. x minus y is 7. That's given, right? So this is 7. And y minus z is also 7. So this gives us something nice. If we distribute the 7, 7x plus 7y minus 7y minus 7z because we're going to negate everything inside the parentheses and 7z cancels out. I mean 7y, you know what I'm talking about, right? We end up with 7x minus 7z and obviously this can be factored into 7 times x minus z. Wait a minute, were you expecting to have x minus z? It's not given, well at least not directly, right? So on the other hand, we can do the following we have two equations, right? Let's go ahead and use them. x minus y is 7 and y minus c is 7. What are you thinking? Elimination? Yes. Let's go ahead and add these up. y cancels out. x minus z becomes 14. Awesome. That's what we needed. So now let's go ahead and replace x minus z with 14. You understand why this is my favorite method? Because it involves a trick. Obviously, this problem probably appeared on a math competition, even though I can't tell you which one. Uh, or if it did, but looks like it did. Anyways, 7 times 14 equals 98. So that would be the answer, at least with the second method, right? Uh, let's see if we can find something similar with the first method. Great. Because we did the second method first, we got, we're going to do the first method second. And obviously that doesn't make the second method first or the first method second. So we have x minus y equals y minus z equals 7. So from here, I get the following. x equals y plus 7, and y equals z plus 7. But because y is z plus 7, I can replace this y with z plus 7. And from here, I get x in terms of z and y in terms of z, which is something that I wanted. Because my numerical expression contains three variables, and we want to evaluate it, find a numerical value. And obviously, if I can turn everything into one kind, then it's easier, hopefully. I, this method is not guaranteed, but, you know, we'll see. Replace x with z plus, I mean, I mean, it's not always going to give you the right answer, but you just got to keep trying. z plus 14 squared plus z itself squared minus 2 times y squared, which is z plus 7 squared. Awesome. Let's go ahead and expand everything, and we'll simplify z squared plus 28z plus 196 plus z squared 
minus 2 times. What's that? z squared plus 14z plus 49. And then if you go ahead and distribute, by the way, we can add these two and that becomes 2z squared plus 28z plus 196. And if you distribute to 2, we get minus 2z squared minus 28z minus 98. Does that look familiar? Now 2z squared, 2z or not 2z, they cancel out. 28z also cancels out. We end up with 196 minus 98, which is actually 98. Because 196 is 2 times 98. Hopefully you knew that, right? Great. Awesome. So we get 98 again, which should not be a surprise because we're solving the same problem. Okay, great. Are we done? Not yet, because we still have another method. I know some people are not going to like the third method for obvious reasons because it is very numerical. So here's what it is. We have this system. And then we're supposed to evaluate x squared plus z squared minus 2y squared, right? So here's what we're going to do. Since we're always finding a numerical value, obviously you may not know that, but the, the way the problem is given, uh, it's asking for a numerical value. And especially if you are taking a multiple choice test, this will be perfect. So we can make up values because the value of this expression should not depend on x, y, z. It's a constant, okay? So let's go ahead and assume that x is 7 and y is 0. That implies, obviously, you can't just make up values for x, y, z at the same time because you have to satisfy the system. x equals 7 and y equals 0 implies that z is equal to negative 7. So what we need to do now is plug this into our equation. Make sense? Let's do it. So x squared plus z squared minus 2y squared is equal to 49 and if you square negative 7 you still get a positive answer so be careful about that plus 49 minus 2 times 0 awesome that's just a 0 what is 49 plus 49 that will be 98 again we got the exact same answer again and that should not be a surprise because we're solving the same problem so three methods now is there a fourth method to solve this problem who knows maybe I think you're going to let me know, right? Now let's go ahead and see if Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Because in a few seconds, I'm going to show you the answer. If you want to pause and then make a guess, you can do so. But let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha is supposed to offer. Ta-da! And here we have an input and the output is found. Bible from Alpha. Good job, from Alpha. It can't always find the answer, which you'll see in my other video at A plus PI. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.